How is Matt Campbell? And this is important. If you've been listening to our network for years, you know how much these my top two guys that are coming up. Campbell's one. I'll get to the my top guy at the list next. That these two guys that I've talked about for years. Okay, this isn't about oh look who's this guy in Iowa State made it to the Big Twelve championship game. Wow, that's that's kind of nice. Who's this guy? Oh, he's okay. No. We have been on top of Matt Campbell for years. You know how much we like Matt Campbell. We've ta- we talked about when they declined to be the uh, t- for the Jets job a couple of years ago. Does is it because of ownership? Was it because he looked at the roster and who was running the roster and was like, "That's a situation I want no- nothing to be a part of." Would he change his mind now because of the fact that now he goes, "Oh wow, now they're shaped up a lot different." And it wasn't anything personal with the owners. It was about the structure of the team who was making personnel decisions and all that other stuff. But why hasn't he been interviewed yet? And, and maybe he has, maybe it's one of those things where he's telling people, Hey, I don't want you to let anybody know I've been, this is not, don't let's not report this. I don't know. But how has Matt Campbell's name not been thrown around in a, in a, in a few days, everybody talked about, his po- the possibilities of him being and should be at the top of everybody's list when Monday came around. It's Thursday and we haven't heard anything. I, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, and if he doesn't want to be a head coach in the NFL right now, then how come he hasn't said it? To just say it. He hasn't said anything. But this guy has everything going for him. He's got a great future as 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 a, as a coach, whether it's going to be college or the NFL. Uh, if you take a look at, I mean, uh, the reason why I, I was, I mean, I noticed this guy early because I used to even follow the Iowa State program when Dan McCarney was the head coach. That was the last successful head coach before before he took over Campbell. And um, and here was the game. Here's high. Here's highlights right here of a game that that, that started it all. They were a thirty-one point underdog in season two of the Matt Campbell regime. They go into I they go into Oklahoma, Big 12 powerhouse Oklahoma as a 31 point dog. They had not lost because they had lost and I'll get to that. I don't remember the exact number, but they had lost like whatever 18 straight or 17 straight or whatever, wherever it was games to Oklahoma and it had been like 11, 12, 13 years where one of those losses was 10 points or less. So not only were they losing, by the way, that's Baker Mayfield. Not only were they losing to Oklahoma, they were never close, but this, and and, and this was a fun team too. Matt Campbell coached and there he is. Matt coached, he, he coached David Montgomery the Chicago running back who's starting to now, who, who is the number one reason that Chicago's in the postseason? It's not Khalil Mack. It's not Mr. Trubisky. It's Montgomery. And it's the offensive line giving him an opportunity to run through holes. But the, the, that's what's working for the Bears right now. You have Alan Lazard, who has turned into Aaron Rodgers' number two target. And he was a guy that didn't have the measurables coming out, but... He sure was coached well at Iowa State. And 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 over, that's what you do when you coach Iowa State. You take these kids that are two stars and three stars, and you get them to, you get them to, to you, you get more out of their ability than the average head coach. Joel Lanning. I was a big fan of Joel Lanning's. Loved this kid. This kid was a, was, was a, was a really good linebacker. That could also play quarterback for Iowa State. So he did anything that Matt Campbell wanted, Joel Lanning did for the team. And, uh, but it, overall, you just look at this. Here it is. Prior to arriving at Iowa State, Iowa State had just one winning season in the previous 10. That was when McCarney was there. They, they played Oklahoma. What did they play him like six times, I believe? He's two and four against Oklahoma. There it is, two and four. And it snapped their 18 game losing skid in his second try. 
Okay, two and four against Oklahoma. Every one of those games, every one of them, all six that he coached against Oklahoma, ten points or less, all six. And again, the previous ten games, none of those losses were by ten points or less. And he had lost 16 straight prior to him taking over. Or 18 straight prior to him taking... Well, actually, not prior to him, but it was 18 by the time they won that football game. Uh, so, I mean, he, he had success at Toledo, and he had it set up nice for him at Toledo, though. So it was set up nicely for him, and he did a really good job there, too. He kept the momentum going. And then he got the gig. And by the way, it's interesting. Five years at Toledo, left to Iowa State. Five years at Iowa State. Is he ready to leave now? So, and when he got the gig at Toledo, he was the youngest head coach in FBS football at the time. He was just 32 years old. So he's a young guy. I love the fact that he's only 41 years old. He's a proven uh, program builder, someone that could take a bad team and coach them up. That's exactly what uh, the Jets need.